Okay. Um, uh, student, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So uh, we continue with the need uh, just now the um, the blocking. OK, so the keywords there is a Nelson factors. OK, the reason you're using the blocking is because they consist of the Nelson factor. You're going to remove away this Nelson factor. So therefore you are using the blocking. So now under the block design, we will extend our model is from the single factors because we always we treat that the tall eye is a stand for the uh, the factor of the uh, treatment what we are our interest and then the beta j here right now is your factors for the blocks you can consist of the many of the blocks here okay so we are going to testing about the about the tall eye our main target is still the tall eye here okay so um, in the, um, the, the randomized completely block design, we need to have uh, two assumptions here before we have uh, this thing. We have a uh, sum of the tall i will equal to zero. OK, this one is uh, just now I have shown it to you before. Similarly, you also have another one is a uh, sum out of the beta j will equal to zero. OK. So this one is another one. It's a sum out for the all the blocking effects. They were given the answer with zero, and then you sum it out for the sum of the treatment effect. You will get your your value is zero. Okay. Okay. So this one is a uh, the two of the here. So this one is sum out along the i. This one is sum out along the j here. Okay. Uh, if under the fixed effect, I have shown it to you how this one is come from. Okay. So because we are studying the fixed effect model, our model, we were testing out the H0, the mean for the uh, the mean for the first one, okay? The mean for the, um, okay, the H, The mean for the one will equal to the mean for the two until the, the rest of them will be have a, the mean for the A because you have an A treatment. We are not testing about this level of it. Okay, so the H1, we will test it out. Uh, we will have a, alternatively, of course, is at least one pair of them is not equal. Any pair of them, at least one pair of them is not equal. Okay, so I don't need to write the H1 here. Alternatively, you have another one is uh, about the if you want to write in the tall form, so you also write it out H naught. The tall for the one will equal to the tall for the two will equal to the tall for the A because you have a A levels of the treatment, so they must be equal to zero under the H naught. Under the H1, at least one of the tall i is not equal to zero. Okay, so this one is your hypothesis statement for the uh, blocking, uh, for the testing of the blocking. But of course, you want to see also you you extract it out the uh, the blocks. Okay, you also can testing the block here if you wish to do that. You because you want to see that whether the block effect is really significant or not significant. So we can have uh, this one. If you want to have a blocking one, the block one, then we will testing because the block I use a notation as a beta. So therefore, we will test the beta one equal to beta two equal to until you have a beta uh, number of level. I use a beta. The number of beta is a B, the level of B. So it's a B will equal to zero. Alternatively, they are at least one of them not equal to zero, then you reject the null hypothesis. So in that case, we want to see whether the block is really uh, important or not. Okay. So this one, it should be the model of here. Okay. So since we have a grand mean, we have a top treatment, we have a beta, we have an error term. So therefore, when we apply it to the sum of square, we need to break it to the a few components. 
Previously, you have a sum of square for total, sum of square for treatment, sum of square for error. But now you have a block here, so therefore you have a sum of square for block. So how are we going to write it down? Our analysis of variant is still the same thing. This one is a still the sum of square for total. We can be divided in, uh, we can be write in the following terms here. Okay, we just, uh, you simplify it, they will go back to here. So the I dot minus my grand mean, this one is a dot J minus the grand mean, and then the rest of them will be here. You expand the square bracket here. So if you still remember, I have shown it to you, if the one way ANOVA, you cross product, you can cancel off. So the similar thing is here, if you expand for this three expansion, power of square here, then you, those of the cross product, they will equal to zero. So you only left is the first one is for your I dot minus a grand mean square. So you have a treatment. The second one is a dot J minus the Y bar square. Uh, by bar double dot square is a, this one is a SS for the block. And the finally, the last one is a SS for the arrow. Okay, so I use the I is represent for the treatment. The J one is for the block. So you can see the idea is similar to the one way ANOVA where you from the sum of square for the total sum of square of treatment. Now you have an additional sum of square. OK, then you have sum square for error. Before that, you do not have a sum of square or block because you do not have any Nelson factor. So where is the sum of square for block? Previously, you don't have this thing. These two is actually together. OK, you only break to the sum of square for total, the treatment. But these two were together. So now, because there is a sum of the, the blocking will come in, uh, come out here. So therefore, you need to break it out to the two parts here. So you have a sum of square for the block component. OK, so from the sum of square for the block, I believe that you can guess the following step is uh, we need to know the degree of freedom. Then after that, we get the, uh, the mean square, uh, the mean square. OK. So the following one should be the sum of square. Just now is sum of square. The following one will be the degree of freedom. So the degree of freedom for the sum of square for total is always AB minus one. Means that is a total observation minus by one. If I have a, a hundred observation, so I know that my sum of square total, the degree of freedom always must be less than one. So therefore it's 99. The sum of square for the treatment is also will be fixed is a equal to A minus 1. Similarly, for the sum of square for the block, is a B minus 1. And then the remaining one is will be error. So the error is very hard for you to find out the general formula. Okay, but we will know that the total is always the total observation minus by 1. For the treatment level, is a A minus 1. The sum of square for block also is a B minus 1. So the remaining one is the error. Okay. So the idea of the, we want to get the sum of square, all these things, the idea is because we want to get the uh, mean square. Okay, so therefore the ratio of sum of square to their degree of freedom is form the mean square. Okay, and then the ratio of the two mean square is form the F distribution. So after we do the F distribution, then we can be know that whether there is a significant difference or no significant difference. Okay. Uh, yes, there is only single replicate. You only repeat for one time. So later on, I can show you the table. They only repeat for one time. OK, yeah, every experiment, they only run for one time. OK. So this is a table, it's an ANOVA table for uh, showing you the ANOVA table here. So this one is a, what you're familiar with, the sum of square for treatment, the sum of square for block, sum of square for error. So this one is a mean square uh, for the treatment divided by MSC. Of course, if we want to test the significance of the block, also we can have a MS for the block divided by MS for the error. Okay, so we can be testing out whether this block, what you suspect is a 
they consist of the Nelson factor, is it is really the significant or not? So you also can be tag A. Okay? But you must remember that you carry out this test is because you want to know the treatment. The treatment is your main factor to consider. So let us go through the what you have. The following one is a, this is an example. Huh? Okay. So the, the, the medical device is manufactured, produce the artificial veins. Okay. So this graph are produced by the uh, what uh, PP, uh, PPEF resin combined with the replicant into the tubes. Okay. So this one is uh, what they have found out. The frequently some of the tube in the production run contain the small hard protrusion on the external surface. So these defects are known at the fritz and is cause for uh, for rejection of the unit. Okay. So uh, some of the examples, uh, I think this this type of the thing may be the engineering uh, side. Uh, I mean the engineer may be more the uh, understand about the scenario. Okay. So if you learn the statistic, of course you need to work together with the those of the engineer or the those of them, they are expert in this area. They will explain to you the scenario. Then you will decide, you will decide or your design for them what how the design you should be used. So this one is uh, here. The product developer is responsible for the vascular graph suspect uh, that the exclusion pressure affects the occurrence of the frames. Okay. So however, um, they will suspect that a uh, resin is manufactured by the external supply, uh, supplier and is similar to the medical device manufactured in the batch. So they will have uh, different batches of them. So this one is uh, what they found out. They found out that they have a significant variation, batches to the batches variation. So this one is uh, what the, uh, the engineer is thinking about this thing. So therefore, they will use their uh, resin as the uh, uh, blocks. They try to do the blocking for each one. Okay. So in this case, the product developer will decide to investigate the effect of a four different level the extrusion pressure on the freight using the randomized complete block design, considering the batches of the resin as a block. Okay. So therefore, this is an uh, example uh, you have here. Okay. So. Uh, we have a uh, four different of the pressure. This one is uh, what we are going to consider. Okay, you have four different pressure, but when you have a uh, run for the uh, the effect of the different pressure, but they can because the supplier supply the product, they consist of the different uh, performance. So therefore, the batches are uh, the batch of the resin they consider as a block. So therefore, for the each combination, you have only single replicate. You only repeat for one time, okay? So each batch, uh, each of the resin is called the block, okay? So you have uh, the the first batch. Uh, the first batch is consists of the four element. The second batch also four elements and so on, okay? So this one is a uh, what is the result you have? Of course, if you want to get the row total, uh, the for the each column total and the each row total, you also can do that, okay? So the uh, the mean here is uh, what we are going to consider is a different mean here. So as you can see that the mean for the first one, if you're using the 8,500 uh, uh, pressure, you get the 556 and then the second one 550, 533 and 514. And then if you're considering the batches of resin, you can con consider that um, this one is the average here. So the average is range from the 341 to the 377. It's look like there is a difference in the mean, but we need to confirm through our uh, the analysis. Okay. So the what you need to do, uh, what you need to do the calculation, what you need to do a calculation, of course, you need to calculate what is uh, called the sum of square for the total. Okay, the sum of square for total, the formula will uh, is a standard formula. Okay, then after that, you need to calculate is a sum of square for the treatment. Then you get the sum of square for the blocks. 
Okay, then finally you obtain overall here, you can calculate the sum of square for error by using the sum of square for total deducts for these two, then you get the sum of square for error. Okay, so this one is a result, analysis of variant results you have. Okay, where the model consists of the data with the pressure and the brash as a two of the factors. Okay, in the uh, in the one way ANOVA is a AO, AOV, the analysis of variant, they do not let you know that this one is a bash, is a, the blocking effect. Okay, you are the person is a decide or you are the person know that the bash is really is a one of the Nelson factor. But if you recall back here, if you have a this thing, if nobody will tell you that the bash or resin is a, just one of the nascent factor, you may treat this example as a two factors model where the first factor is come from the pressure. The second factor is come from the bash of the resin. OK, so when you are working with the data, you must make sure that the source of the data how is it the data explanation of the data from another party who collect the data? It's don't just blindly just get the data, do the analysis. Otherwise, you will get the wrong uh, the, the, the information. OK, so if you use the R, I use the AOV, uh, the same one, uh, the same formula, then I can run the analysis of here. So this one is uh, referred to the sum of square for the pressure, sum of square for the batch, sum of square for the residue, then the mean square, and then after that you have a test here, then you can be test for these two. So over here, the, the here, the first one here, this one is a testing the different pressure. So for the first one, you are testing the H0. The mean for the, uh, the first pressure is a 8,005, equal to the mean for the second one is the 8,007. Okay, the H0 you are testing for here. If you want to write it as a 1, 2, 3, 4, it's fine. Okay, so I just write it out that they have a different mean is equal. So from the result here, we have a, a alpha is equal to 5%. If you allow for the 5% error in the this test, okay, so of course your alpha here and then you compare with the p value here. The alpha is equal to 0 0.05. This one is you set. OK, you can be set as a different alpha level. OK, so under the 0 0.05, you can see that this one will greater than 0 0.00192. So this thing is called the p-value. In the output, it's called p-value. So the alpha will greater than p-value is the implies that you will reject the now hypothesis. OK, so you reject the now hypothesis, it means that there is a significant difference in the uh, the uh, pressure, different pressure, okay? But of course, you also can be look at uh, the here, the batches here. Do you can observe the p-value here? You also can be testing the, the block for the one equal to block for the two equal to block for the three. OK, you are testing the block is a equal to zero or not equal to zero. So from here also the same thing, the P value will be the alpha will be greater than the P value here. OK, the P value is given by here. So therefore, you also get the answer will be reject the H0. So in this example, we can see that the batches is a, actually the Nelson factor is really uh, exists in the data itself. OK, when you do the analysis, you can be sure that the Nelson factor is a uh, really exist. But if you do not uh, get the another component for the, uh, uh, the the batches here, you treat it as a residue, then you may be lead you to the different conclusion. Sometimes you may get, lead you to the here. You get the answer is do not reject H0. OK. So therefore, I think that when you run the analysis, you must check it carefully whether your blocking is really appear in your system. Sometimes it depends on the they want to treat it as a blocking. If they're not sure whether the 
the Nelson factor is significant or not significant, they put in the model first. Then they run the analysis, checking the Nelson factor whether it's significant or not. If the significant, then the result is a fine. If they're not significant, you can remove the Nelson factor and then redo the analysis again. It's similar to the one-way ANOVA. Okay. So this one is uh, what you can have for the Nelson factors here, where your sum of square you can be break it out to the uh, the sum of square here, where you have an additional one more component. The sum of square here, you have an additional one more component here. Okay, so as I mentioned to you, if you do not do in that way, you will get the sum of square or total will equal the sum of square for the treatment plus the sum of square for error only. You this whole thing will group to the here. Okay, so this one is a what happened if you don't know whether you have a Nelson factor or not, or you run the wrong analysis. You treat that this question is don't have the Nelson factor when you collect the data. Okay, then you can see that this component will be very large. So when you, you use a mean square error divided by sum of square, you get the value is uh, nearly the same. So this one will lead you to the wrong conclusion. They may lead you to the wrong conclusion. So this one is uh, what I want to discuss for you so that you are familiar with what is the uh, blocking here. Okay. So under the blocking here, we also need to aware about what is the. Um, we don't do the multiple when we do the blocking. Yes, uh, we uh, we don't do the multiple. Yes, you want to replicate also you can do that. You no need to do the replicate also can. OK, because this analysis is able to let you to do that without the replication. OK, but certain analysis you cannot be uh, run without the replication. OK, that one I will show it to you for one, because so far as you can see out, if you have a single experiment, you have a single observation, your analysis is can run. Of course, you can be run to uh, two experiments at the same level. Then of course, in that case, they will make your uh what your answer is more reliable because you have a more sample results. So it's a result uh, the the answer will be more reliable instead of using just a single observation. Okay. So uh, over here, you also need to know what is a residue. Okay, the residues here. So just now you have a model of the y. Ij will equal to the mean plus the tall i plus the beta j ij. Okay. Of course, if you repeat your experiment, you have a replication, then your observation become a ijk. Then this one is become the ijk. Of course, you can be replicate it. Huh? So the residue will equal to the eij. OK, I only have a I and the J only because I do not replicate it. So I have a two subscript only. So the residue we give the notation that EIJ will equal to the. Observation. Minus away the fitted value, the fitted equation. OK. So the residue minus the fitted equation. So what is your fitted equation here? So if you can recall back what you have, uh, you have it previously, your, your yij minus away, the fitted equation should be the mean of the head. You have an equation here, plus the treatment effect, plus the, this one, okay. So from here, you also can be calculated. Uh, you can be calculate out what is your uh, here. Yij minus uh, to estimate the overall mean. Basically, the we will use the overall mean of the from the sample to estimate it. Plus, if you here remember that how do we estimate the tall? The tall will be equal to the mean i dot minus the Okay. 
So this one is a double dot. Okay. The third one is also the similar pattern of this one. You will have the dot J, the mean for the each of the block minus away. Okay. So after that, you close the record here. Okay. So you have this thing. So finally, you get the YIJ minus away. This thing is a, you can see the mean of the overall, you can cancel off. So you have a mean for the first one plus the mean for the, the block. Okay. Then minus away the here. So this one is your residue formula under the block design. So you need to make sure that you're aware that different design have a different equation. But basically, our learn, uh, we learn is uh, just the linear model. Okay, we will learn the linear model here. Where you have mean, you have crawl, you have a beta. Almost all the design, we have a similar pattern. Okay, so if you wish to calculate out the, the residue, then you use the observation minus a mean for the each uh, row and then minus a mean from the each column minus the, uh, sorry, um, plus the mean for each column minus away the overall mean, then you can get your residue, okay? So here is uh, why I calculate the residue from the, uh, the, the formula, okay? Because once I run the analysis, I just can take out the residue from the analysis before. Okay, once I run the ANOVA here, then they can calculate for me what is the residue. Okay. If you want to calculate, it should be this thing. Okay. So here is uh, some plots, uh, is uh, some uh, what uh, residue plots to checking of the normality and the, uh, what, the constant variance. So this one is a graph uh, to uh, the bar graph, uh, the box and whisker plot to show that uh, the residue versus the pressure, the residue versus the batches. Okay, so this one is a, what they just a plot to show you that what is the behavior of the here. Okay. And then if you're using the mini tab, if you're using the mini tab, also the same thing. Uh, if you're using the other software also, they do not say that this one is a blocking they will treat it as a, a factor. So, but you are the person is running the uh, analysis, you know that this thing is a Nelson factors. So it's not your interest. Okay, your finally, your whole conclusion of here, you want to make is uh, just the pressure, the exclusion pressure. The rest of them is not important. It's because you want to extract it so that your, uh, the, they extract out the sum of square to the um, uh, to the sum of square for the block and the sum of square for error. Okay. So this one is uh, for the block one. So hopefully you can understand the uh, just the idea about the blocking. Okay. So this one is just a model adequacy to show that uh, whether they fulfill the assumption or no. Okay. And then this one is uh, all these thing is a plot I get from the mini tab. So the some some uh, some patterns what you can observe it is uh, first thing is the normality we do not have a very skew the uh, the the pattern okay we can be say that is uh, like the normal as you can see from here of course they have uh, some tier of here but in general is uh, still have a pattern here unless we can be carry out the goodness of it to cons uh, to check whether they are uh, normal or not normal. So we can be carry out the goodness of it. Okay. So here is a uh, they do not have any obvious pattern. Uh, be, uh, therefore, it's a uh, randomized, and then uh, there are no pattern in the residue versus the block, except the number six. Okay, number six is means that here. Uh, what I say number six is here. Uh, for the block here, as you can see from here, the 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 range of here is a. Uh, Quite big the range of here is larger the range here but when you go to the number six here the range here is a, a bit small okay but the rest of them is quite constant okay because we cannot be perfectly everything we cannot be perfectly say that we must get the perfection okay. 
Okay, so this one is uh, uh, what I want to tell you about the uh, blocking. So, uh, okay, so now uh, after uh, what is the result you obtained previously, okay, you obtained previously from the result here. What I mean from the result here, what we have just now. From the result here, we found that the pressure, there is a significant difference. So we reject the haze knot. But when you reject the haze knot, which combination have a different, or all of them have a different? In the previous example, when you study the single factor, you found out that all the factor, all the factor levels, they are different. Okay, so therefore you use the 160, 180, 200, and the 220, you get the different effect. However, the, in this example, okay, in this one blocking one, we also were doing the two key test. So in the two key test, this one is a mean. Okay, this one is a mean here. I just list it down for you. I just find out the mean for the two, if I use a eight uh, eight thousand five hundred the pressure, the mean is ninety two point eight, and so on. The second one ninety one, eighty eight, eighty five. So I just list it down for you here. If I use a nine thousand one, I will get the low pressure. Where else? If I use a eight thousand nine, I will get eighty eight. And 8,007, I get the 91. And the 8,005, I get the 80, uh, 92. Okay. So this one is uh, later on, I explain to you. Then this table is uh, where I run the two key multiple comparison. Okay. So just now I have mentioned to you that if you want to know that uh, whether there is a significant or no significant difference, then we will check the value zero because we are testing in the here H naught. The mean for the 8007 is equal to the mean for the 8005. Or we can say that it's a mean for the 8007 minus the mean for the 8005 will equal to zero. So we want to see that under the H0, is it the zero is in the uh, in uh, the confident level uh, interval here? So this one is a lower interval, this one is the upper interval. So as you can see out, your interval is from negative 5.63 until 3.37. So this one is means that the zero is four in the interval. Okay, so this one will say that the H0 is do not reject the H0. One is you understand this thing. Other, th other than that, you can be referred to their p-value because this p-value is all, uh, this one is greater than alpha if I use a 5%. Similarly, this one also greater than. This one is a less than. This one is a greater than. This one is a less than. This one is a greater than. So you also can be refer to the p value, or you can check it out. As you can see that for the nine thousand one and the eight thousand seven, you get the answer in negative ten point four two, negative one point uh, one point four. So the the zero is not in the interval. So therefore, you reject the null hypothesis. Similarly, you refer to the p-value, you also can get the answer. The p-value less than alpha, you also will reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So from this one, we will know that which one is uh, different, which one is no different. So from here, we can see that the the first one, 8, 000, uh, 8,007 and 8,005 is no different. Okay, because the p-value is larger than alpha. So I can label it as in this one. Okay, so you see from here, I can label it out all. The first one, 8,005, these two, the value is different, but when we carry out the test, there are no significant difference. So these two, it should be the same mean. Okay, I just label it out here. Then after that, uh, the second one, 8,009 and 8,005. 8009 and 8005 also no significant difference. These two, no significant difference. Because 8007 and 8005 is no significant, and 8009 and 8005 also not significant, so we can group these three, become the single category. Okay, we can group these three. These three will be the, the mean is no significant difference. After that, now I refer to this one, I refer to this one. Then after that, this one. Number 8005 and 8000, 8009 and 8007. 
So these two also not significant. Therefore, you can see almost all the mean is the same. Then after that, the last one, 9,001 and 8,009. Uh, 9, so these two. Okay. So this two is no different, but uh, this two is uh, no different. This, this one is uh, can be the group as the uh, same. If you refer back one, two, three, four here, okay. So I, I label it, uh, follow the line here. Okay. I use back the just now the line here. The first one will be eight, this one. The first line is here. After that, we can have uh, 8,000, uh, 8,005, uh, 8,009, uh, 8,009 to 8,005. These three, these, these two is no significant different. Okay. So after that, we have uh, 8,009 to 8,007 is uh, these two. We have these two is the same. Okay. Then after that, the last one is uh, here, the 9,001 and then uh, 8,009. So it's these two. So look like you have a, uh, you can be group them as uh, these two is belong to one and then these two is a uh, no significant different or you have a uh, this one is a uh, here and then this one is here. So they are uh, have a very clear cut is a uh, means that. You use a uh, 8007 or 8005, you will get the similar output, even though the mean is a uh, different, but you can be say that if I using the 8005 pressure and 8000, uh, 8005 pressure or the 8007 pressure, I will get the similar results. Okay, they will lead me to the similar result. Similarly, if I use a 9001 and 8009, I will get the uh, similar mean. So therefore, you can be do the suggestion to your company instead of using the 9001 consume a lot of the electrics then they may use only 8009 or if they want to the, have a uh, higher mean then they should be in between these two they should be use the 8005 pressure okay so this uh, this one the tukey hsd is a post host test will let you to the more specific uh, pairwise different okay. instead of you just carry out the general analysis of variance because a general analysis of variance is just tell you whether there is a significant difference or no significant difference. But the post host test will tell you in detail about which pair of them they're having the different or they are similar. Okay. So this one is uh, under the analysis of variance of the uh, the Tukey test. So here is a result. If you're using the mini tab, you also can get the same results. Okay. But of course, here I show you a few of the tests in the mini tab. They have a different test. Okay. So uh, the following one, I will extend the following one to here is a Latin square design. Sometimes you have uh, two Nelson uh, factors. So if you have a two Nelson factors, then we will use a certain form is called the Latin square design uh, to eliminate out the Nelson factors. But of course, there is a limitation of the Latin square here because you can see the words here, Latin square. It means that your, your design must be formulated in the certain square form. So let's say you have a Nelson factor one, you have five levels. Now, some factor two, you only have three levels. So the Latin square, you cannot apply anymore. OK, so the Latin square, even though they can eliminate for the two now some factor, but they also have a limitation means that they must be in the square form. OK, so they will try to eliminate out the two now some factors. So when you run for the uh, Latin square design, you cannot be simply assigned for the any pattern. So they must be follow the certain pattern. OK, so this one is also another limitation of the Latin square. OK, so you can see here if I have a three by three, I have a only the three by three Latin where I have a three factor of the Nelson. I have a three level for the fact uh, Nelson factor one. I have another three levels for the Nelson factor two, and then my treatment also must be three levels. 
okay, what you are interested is also must be three value so that you can form the three by three. So you can see that if you write in this one, the standard square, standard square is means that they write the ABC, ABC from the, for each column and then for the row, they starting with the ABC, they with the ABC, they have only one uh, standard square. But you arrange it, the co different combination, there are 12 different combination. But if you go to the single factor with the two Nelson factor, with the uh, the levels, is a four, so it's a four by four Latin. So if you write this Latin square, you have a four standard pattern because the ABCD you fix at the first row, uh, first column and the first row. But this all this thing is still can be have a different position. Therefore, you have a four standard here. Well, if you arrange this thing, you all together you have a five hundred seventy six different combination. Okay. And if you extend it out, become the higher and higher level, you can see that the number of different combinations is there are a lot. Okay. So under the Latin square, what is the new thing you have? Okay, actually the idea will be the similar one. You have a mean, you have a treatment. The I is a treatment. Uh, sorry, the I here you can be say is a treatment here. The J here, if you want to say that is uh, about the uh, uh, the what the Nelson factor one and the Nelson factor two. But if you don't want to do that, I here I just put the alpha i is a say the row effect. The beta j is a column is a column effect. Then I have a treatment one. I use a tall here because I want to consistent with the previous uh, chapter. I always use a tall as a treatment. But of course, this one is not the fix. You can be used any notation. But as long as you define it clearly, okay. So this one is my main uh, factor I have, but I have a two Nelson factors. It's the alpha i and the beta j. So of course this one is a this model. Also we have a some restriction to it. One of them is a summation of the tall i or equal to zero, okay. And then you summation of the uh, alpha. Uh, sorry, this one is a j. This one is the i will equal to zero. And then the third one was summation of the beta k will equal to zero. These are the restrictions under the, this model here. Okay. So the idea of the this uh, design is uh, what is the mean by the standard here? Because the standard here, the standard here is just show you that they have a different of the combination only. Okay, they want to show you is that they are have a different combination here. Okay. This one is uh, to show you that sometimes we need the standard, uh, the standard form. Okay, we have a Latin square, we have a many form. So uh, they will show you that the if they in the standard square, this one is a form of the standard square. After that, you have the total number here. The standard form here is because they want to do the randomization. Actually, you you still remember in the first time I introduced for you the ANOVA, you do the randomization. You how to do the randomization for the single factor? You will randomize for the all, but when you go for the uh, the blocking is, uh, design previously, you will randomize across uh, uh, inside your block. But for this Latin square, is actually you also need to randomization. Okay, but their randomization must be two ways. One way is here, another way is a one way is a block. Uh, the the for the each row. And then this one, another way is a uh, uh, each column. Okay, so therefore they need the standard uh, square here. But I do not discuss this randomization uh, using the standard square. Okay. So the, uh, this one is a design you have. So the design is very much similar to randomized completely block design except we have an additional component. So we have a, uh, sorry, additional component will be here, the beta k, okay? So you have an additional component, of course your sum of square also, you need to divide it into the different components. Okay. So uh, because of the this Latin, Latin square, but you still remember that you have a two Nelson factors. That two Nelson factor is not your interest, so therefore, the F-36, we will only concentrate on the MS treatment or MSE. 
Of course, just now, as I mentioned, if you are interested, want to know that whether this Nelson factor is re really important or they will affect your results, then you can be tested. Okay. So this one is the ANOA tables uh, for you to do it up. Okay. So for the just now, I think that one student is asking me about the uh, what does the number of the standard uh, standard uh, square means? Uh, standard uh, standard square mean. Okay. Standard is a means that you have uh, the a uh, ABC ABC at the beginning. Okay. Uh, standard means is here. Oh. ABC, ABC, your starting will be ABC, your starting will be ABC. Okay, so if you can see from here, why is a 4 here? You have a starting is a ABCD, ABCD, but here you still can arrange it. Just that you have a B, then you have a A here, the A at this position, and then this one is a C, uh, C and D, this one is a D, C. You can see from here, if, if this one, you have a A, B, C, D, yeah, B, C, D. So if you arrange it, you can have a, here is a A. Then this one is a D, C, okay? Then after that, you have a, a B, C, D as well. Then here is a C, so here can be D, okay? Here is a, can be the A, here can be the B. Then after that, you also have a, a D, then here is a C, then this one is a B, this one is a A. You can see that this part is still can be changed. You still can be changed for the different. That, so therefore, they have a four. You arrange it, you get a four different here. But the standard one is a, all these things must be fixed. Okay. So this one is the ANOA tables uh, for the uh, Latin square where you consist of the row and the columns. So these two row and column we treat it as a Nelson factor. As I mentioned, we also can be test for the F, for the uh, MS for the row, or MS for the uh, E. They use a E. So similarly, you also can have a F here is the MS for the column over MS for the E, okay? So you can see that your formula will be quite standard as long as you are deal with the, uh, the uh, fixed effect model. Fixed effect model, your F will be always divided by MSE, okay? You will always will divided by MSE here. Of course, there is a uh, exceptional, is an exceptional where your analysis cannot be analyzed, then your MSE will be come from the other factors. That one is I will discuss with you during the uh, factorial analysis. Okay, so I believe that after I go through for the first design is a one way ANOA, followed by the block, completely randomized block design for the single block with the single treatment. And then this one is a single treatment here or the single factor with the two Nelson factor. You may get the idea of it, how you are going to extract it how you're going to extend it. And then you can see that the sum of square one, you can be right in the different component. Those of the product of the two component, they will cancel off it, okay? They only left is a one, two, three components, and then sum, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, plus the sum of square. The total out must be equal to the total sum of square for the to uh, total, okay? So this one is an uh, example for the uh, rocket propellant uh, problem. They are using the Latin square. Okay. So in the Latin square, as I mentioned, the the square, they all the Nelson factor must be uh, same levels with the uh, main factors you are concentrated on. Okay. So in this question, they are want to have a uh, and uh, uh, know that. They're using the five formulation. Is there any difference with the, their formulation? So for when they collect the data, they each formulation, they have a different raw material, the first one. The second thing is uh, the formulation are prepared by the several operators. So these are the two uh, factors or the two Nelson factors where they think that they need to take it out from the analysis. Okay. 
So therefore, the analysis will carry out is using the Latin square design. Okay. So this is uh, the example of here, where the Latin square will run in the following one. Under the bash material, the first one, operator number one, you run the A, so you run the 24 of them. Okay, the result is to get the 24, and these are the, all the results you have here. Okay. So again, for this uh, scenario also, we have only single replicate. Okay. Uh, this is uh, if I using the, uh, the, the R, I have uh, the bash is the first one, operator and the formulation. Of course, the sequence is not important. Okay, you can be put the formulation first, followed by bash, followed by operator. Okay, so I just run out the ANOVA, then uh, this is the ANOVA table they produce for me. Okay, so our idea is uh, here, you can see from here, the bash here is a Nelson factors, the operator also a Nelson factor. Based on the analysis here, we can observe that actually you have a uh, different batches of the raw material, they won't be affected your results means that those of the suppliers supply the raw material they have a same uh, uh, effect so therefore you can observe that here not significant but our target is uh, on the formulation so the formulation here there is a significant difference so means that you use a formulation a b c d e they produce different results okay so if you know this thing, then of course we will run the multiple um, the what the two key HSD test to test that which combination is different, okay, or which one is no different. Then of course I can get the residue and the fitted value if I want to. After I run this command, then I can get it out. If I want to get the residue, if I want to get the uh, fitted values, I also can be calculated. Yeah. Because uh, from the residues, from the residues, okay, the EIJ, you will have the, the observation and the here. Okay, in this case, we will IJK already because you have uh, uh, the three dimension minus the fitted value. Okay, so the residue were given by this form where you can be use a fitted value from here and then using the observation minus a fitted value, you will get your residue. Okay. So this one is a multiple comparison of here. This this table also you have familiar with. This one is just a pairwise because our result show that there is a significant difference in the formulation. So from here, which formulation there is a significant difference? You can refer the last column, the p-value, or you can be checked the lower and the upper. Check the value of the zero is where where is the position of zero. So if for the first one, the a and b, there is a significant difference because it's negative fourteen to negative one point eight. So the zero is outside the interval, or you can refer to the p-value here. So we set the p we set the alpha is let's say five percent. OK, of course, you can set it as a 1% or the 10%. Uh, so if you set the alpha 5%, you can see that this one is a significant difference. This one is no. This one is clearly no. Uh, here, no. Then this one is yes. This one, no. This one is yes. OK, so from here, we know that the B, A, and the D with the D with the uh, B, and here is a D with the C. Okay, these three they have a significant difference. So we can be know that if there is a significant difference, if let's say the C and A is no significant difference, or they are uh, for the D and A is no significant difference also. So means that you use a formulation A and the formulation D, you will get the same effect. Okay, so this one is uh, how you're going to analyze the and what are the what comparison of the two key SSD. Okay. Any of you have, of course, this one is the output. You can be go through it because I uh, when I finish out the class, I will upload this whole slide in the uh, uh, spectrum 
or the Microsoft team so you can take it down. Okay, you can route call. So the result here, uh, I will maintain it. Uh, here is a R. Here I use the form the mini tab one. I will maintain the result here. Okay, you can be have a comparison. Okay. So this part is a. I just go to one more uh, part here. This part is a, actually the additional. Okay, is a another thing. Is a so far we go through is a complete block design. But how about the case is called the incomplete block design? Okay, it's a balanced incomplete block design. So what we can do for the this thing? Okay, sometimes you run the uh, experiment for the each block. Just now we have a experiment in the each block. If I have a four treatment levels, every block I need to run for the four. The first block I need to run the four levels. The second block also four levels. The third block also four levels and so on. All must be the same levels, but sometimes you cannot run all. So therefore, you you are unable to run all the treatment combination in each block because you not enough the material. So in that case, then you need to consider is what they call as a balance called incomplete block design. Okay. So how is it called the uh, the this type of design? The idea is uh, here. So the balance in complete data design, okay, for this type of problem, it is possible to use the randomized block design in which every treatment is not present in every block. Okay, means that every treatment is not appear in the each block. So a balance in complete block design is an incomplete block design in which two treatments appear together an equal number of times. So this one is meaning that you you can be incomplete, but what you consider is must be balanced. The balance in the sense that the two treatment appear together uh, an equal number of the times. Okay. So this one is a deal with the, you need to do the checking, but in, the, uh, in here the slide, I think I do not give you the formula. So you need to do the checking, whether the number of times is the appear must be equal. You cannot simply assign the, uh, the, the, the treatment to the levels. I will show you the example later. Okay, so because this one is just the same thing as a single block design, so the model will be different. The tall I and the beta J, the tall is a treatment effect, the beta is your block. So the model will be the same. But when you deal with the calculation because of the incomplete case, then you're using the slightly different formula. Okay, not the slightly different, it's a very much different, especially for the treatment adjuster. Because the treatment for the every block, they may not be the equal treatment anymore. So therefore, they need to have a, this one is called the treatment adjuster. The calculation of the treatment will be different, but the block is still remain the same. Okay. And then your total sum of square, the total sum of square, this total sum of square is always the fix. Because the, no matter what type of the design, your total sum of square will always fix. But because this one is a treatment adjusted, so therefore the formula of the calculation, it will be different. But the block is never affected, so the block formula will be similar to what you have learned before in the uh, uh, block design or the Latin square. So once you know these three components, you can get your sum of square for the error. Okay? So this one is I just introduced for you. I also do not include any example here. I just introduced to you. We have a SARS case is called the treatment adjusted or you run the in the block where each block you do not have all the treatment combination. Okay. So this one are the uh, uh, introduction for you all. What is the one way ANOVA? Or first thing is uh, what is uh, how the ANOVA is doing is that they try to partition the total variety into the different component. Then after that, I introduce for you what is a uh, blocking. Okay, blocking is try to the eliminate the Nelson factors or try to extract out. Okay? Then you have a single Nelson factor, you have a two Nelson factors. Okay, so all these things is will be prepared for you for the following chapter, where is our main target uh, is a factorial analysis. Okay, so any of you have a question?
I, I believe that uh, some of you maybe have a textbook, so you can be re read it out uh, the textbook, what they have, uh, uh, so that you are familiar with the chapter three and the chapter four. Because all these things were related, especially the factorial design. If you understand about the what I have mentioned to you, the sum of square, then you can go ahead with the factorial design. So about the tutorial, uh, about the tutorial question, about tutorial question, I will give you the tutorial question. Uh, it's uh, also from the textbook, but if you don't have the textbook, I will be uh, uh, give you the question. I will give you the question. Then when you do the question, when you do the question, you can be do it manually. You can do it manually, or if you want to use the R codes I given to you, you can be do it that way. Okay, because you are here in the math department. I believe that the formula wise, you also need to uh, aware about it because all these things it will be not just use the software. If you just directly use the software is good. You you no need to do it manually, but sometimes you want once you want to go to the theory parts, you don't know how it did come from. You will face a difficulty to understand how the formula do it, even though if they don't have the software to use you. Uh, you need to do the programming yourself, then you need to understand about the formula, then you only can program. So all these things, the formula wise, I believe that is uh, quite important. OK, so uh, for the tutorial question, I will upload uh, later. Uh, I will upload later. OK, so next week we have uh, the first tutorial question. Uh, question. We have just a discussion. OK, then um, you can be trying out the questions. Okay. Whether uh, whether you are able to uh, do it or not. OK, so when we go for the uh, the examination question, the examination question is uh, most of the time is uh, doing uh, manually. OK, of course, I will be give you the very big problem to solve it. Uh, do it from the A to Z. For example, just now I have a Latin square. The example of the Latin square. Uh, where you have uh, so many of the um, levels like this thing. I won't be asked you to calculate from the A under the E so many things. So I will, some of the example, I will give you the table. It's an incomplete ANOVA table. You just fill in the uh, fill in the blank. Then from there, you do the analysis. OK. Any of you have a question? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think on uh, the slide that you showed. Mm, uh, which slide? Um, the Latin squares, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, um, this one is Latin square. Yeah. Yeah, so I think with the one you showed on, on slide 31, like 31. Match, yeah. Let me see, yeah, uh, thirty one. Uh. Yeah. Is it so, this one? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, but, but I noticed when you did the example, they didn't follow the arrangement of the A B C D and all like this. So, is it? Can can we just use this as a template? Uh, which one? You are referring this example or here? I'm I'm referring to this one and the example. Uh, uh, uh this um slide thirty one and the example that we did. Oh. Later. OK, because you see the later on you. This one is a you can see you have a five. Uh, I mean, the you have a uh, here is a five. Here is a five. OK, so if you refer to this one. Uh, how many parts you have? If you refer to the standard one, uh, you can write as a 56 of them. You know, they have a different types of them. This uh, the example here is only one of them only. Yeah. Yeah, so therefore, actually, is you need to do the randomization out of the 56 of them. You only choose one of them to run your experiment. Yeah. Oh, oh, you have to randomize. Yeah. So, so yes. you, don't just, you don't just copy the one from the no, slide they, one. No, that one is just show you the standard, the one of the example here. Oh. It's an example of the standard square, but they consist of the standard one. Uh, there are to 656 of them, you know. 
So you need to recognize, uh, you choose one of them only. Oh, okay, okay. But the total Latin square, uh, they consist of, you can see, 156, if not the standard, you know. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there was one more. I'm struggling to find the slides. Um, Which one? I think, oh, man, wait, wait. Um, so on, on, the, on the last example that we did, Okay. Um, you ran it through R, right? Yeah, okay, slide 37, slide 37. 37, okay. So, ah, yes. yeah, when, when you have a, a p-value, like oh. 0 0.04, that's very close to like 0 0.05, that's very close to your mm. your confidence level. Um, mm. What, how do you interpret that? You, I mean, yeah, how do you interpret that? If you, you're close to the 5%, five, five, five of course, you will reject it. But you can see that 0 0.04, a 0 0.04, the p-value is actually is also the what the error. So it's a 4% of the error. The 4% of the error. I mean, the here is a 0 0.04. So the alpha, first thing, your alpha, if you set it to a 0 0.05, of course, you can reject it. But if you allow for the, let's say, the larger alpha is a 10%, or you say that is a you want to have a one percent, then you will lead you to the different uh, uh, results. So this one is depends on how much error you allow to do uh, for the test. If yeah. you allow just a five percent, then you will say that they are significant different. But the significance level you choose at the start, right before you yeah 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 those. you you yeah. choose at your start. Yeah. So so in this case, I will just uh I will reject it uh. Yeah, we are rejected. We cannot say they nearly, but of course they can be the uh, close to the answer. But this one is 0 0.4 and 0 0.5. I think it's a, a bit different. Unless you maybe get the, some answer is 0 0.049. Mm, then, 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 yeah, then you may ask. So in that case, uh, we still, if in the 5%, uh, we still go to reject it. Actually, that one is no, no, no clear answer on it. Right. Yeah. So you huh? so you, you cannot conclusively conclusively say whether it has an effect or not. You cannot you cannot really say anything. Yes. Or you can be say that is a they, in fact unless they really greater than a lot, then we still can say that there is a significant difference. Even though zero point zero four nine, we say that they still say that they are significant different. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, bear in mind that the operator is not your main concern. Your main concern is a formulation. Huh? Because these two is a Nelson factor only. Okay. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, I can hear you. Uh, can you open the slide that uh, the Latin square just now? Latin square, okay, yeah. Uh, Is it this okay. one? Which one? Yeah, uh, the, the one that uh, my friend asked just now. Uh, yeah. About the, um, about the uh, combination of the ABC. Mm. So oh, uh, okay. you said that, you said that it is just uh, one from the many example, right? Mm. So if we use another example, um, is it will be showing the same result that significant or is there possible that it will show a different result about the significance? Um, I, never, I never try it. I believe that they are go to the same uh, day. Uh, I never try it because you see, you, you the idea of the here, you cannot have a fixed pattern is because they want to randomize so that the, the error will be randomized it. So you ask me if you use for the different combination, uh, let's say you, you maybe use a other, uh, let's say uh, before that you run is a, this, you run is this thing. Now you're running about this thing, but for the each row and the each column will be different. So I believe that the answer will be different. Because the each row and the each column will already change. Oh, okay. okay. 
because you okay. cannot say you have a result here, you have a result here, then you arrange it according to what? You, you have a result here, then you arrange according to the what is the position. Because you need to decide your what is a ABCD, all this design first. You need to decide it first, then you only run your experiment. You assign your observation there. Okay, before that, before you run experiment, you don't have all this value first. You all this value, you only have a, this set of the design. Then the observation here, you only test it. So you must have a, all this design arrangement of this set, uh, this uh, combination first. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Okay, so this uh, this one I will uh, keep it. Uh, you uh, I will upload later. I will upload later to the here as an introduction. If you want to read more detail about the explanation here, you can be here. Especially the last example uh, for the uh, balance incomplete uh, design, you can get it uh, from the textbook. They can explain to you. But for your information, that one is not the the, the target for this course. Okay. And then another thing is, uh, let, let me introduce for you here first. Okay, uh, I just introduced, then I already upload the slide. You can be check it out here. Okay, before I end here. So our target here is to actually go to the factorial design. Okay, factorial design is means that so far you can see that from the previous uh, uh, two, two, two lecture classes, okay, we only concentrate on the single factor. Now in the chapter five onward, we are studying more than two one factors. You have a uh, two factors, you can have uh, three factors, four factors and so on. So we are interested about many factors. Then at the same time, when you collect your data, you may consist of the Nelson factors. So the factorial with the Nelson factors where you're using the blocking uh, techniques to eliminate out. So you have a factorial with the blocking will come in. Okay. So the idea of the factorial is you have many factors. But once you have a many factors, then you must consider there is an iteration. For example, if I, I want to study is a two factors, factor one and factor two, we also need to consider their interaction factor in between the A and B or the factor one and factor two, because these two factors will affect each other. Okay, so this one is uh, our main target of here, because it cannot be every time it's just a single factor. You can have uh, more than uh, a few factors, okay? So the, the factorial design is a general uh, factorial experiment, okay? So the, uh, one of the example, it should be the two factor factorial design with the fixed effect, okay? I introduced for you the random effect is uh, in the beginning of the previous a few uh, section, uh, slides. Okay, but our target in uh, this course, we are concentrated on the fixed effect model. Okay, so we have a uh, ANOVA for the factorial. So the factorial is just extension for the two, uh, more than two factors. So the factors can be the quantitative, can be the qualitative factors. Okay, of course, your response values, your value of the Y must be the uh, quantitative. Okay, so this one is uh, what I will go through with you uh, in the next week. Okay, so uh, in the section, uh, I think uh, we are a bit late. Uh, we are a bit uh, delayed from the, suppose the schedule. But anyway, uh, we have a tutorial time to be, uh, replace it, it's fine. Okay. So I will go through with you the uh, tutorial, uh, the what the factorial experiment next week. Okay. Can you have a question? So for the next week, uh, we have a lecture as well as a tutorial. So the tutorial, I will leave it for you to ask me the question instead of I show you a one by one. Okay. So uh, you can be. I will give you a few examples for the tutorial question. You can be try for the one or two to make sure that you are familiar with the how to use it, the uh, formula itself, how to do the calculation, 
how to uh, interpret the results. Okay, so for the uh, for the rest of them, I think because the first tutorial is just an introduction for the blocking, the one way and one. Okay, then after that, we only go through the tutorial for the factorial. Okay, so sometimes the tutorial may not be one hour, but I will use it for the lecture. Yeah. Oh, so I will explain about this table. I will explain about this table uh, next week about how the idea of the factory design. I will use a two levels factory design. Then we extend the idea to the many fac uh, factor levels and then many factor as well. Yeah. Any more question? No? If you have any question, you can be text me also because I think everybody have my WhatsApp or you have my other contact uh, the num uh, you can contact me using the different way 